Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I see attendees coming into our room for the webinar. Hello, hello, everyone. Let's give everyone one or two more minutes just so we are all gathered here and then we will start because we have such an interesting topic today. We are going to learn how to maximize our funding opportunities. And I think that my friend Anthony won't be talking about how to find a billionaire philanthropist spouse, but he will, you know, give us the ups and downs and all inside info about how to make the greatest impact with our small businesses. So let's see how many people will be gathered here today and then we will start. Uh, just a small reminder for everyone who is joining us. We have the sign language interpretation, but you have to scroll down to the screen menu and click on the globe and choose the French translation for, for the international sign. And we will also make sure that we will have the Spanish interpretation as well under the Spanish translation, but give us one more minute so we can set that up. And I think that in one more minute, I will be able to give the floor back to Dr. Anthony Janonymous. I always butcher your surname. One day you have to sit me down and just, you know, teach me how to pronounce your name. And then I will, you know, teach you how to say Małgorzata in perfect I Polish. I was say, we both struggle with the same issues, I guess, as a child. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, Anthony, I think I can slowly give the floor to you. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's see if I can share my screen now. And actually, Ragant, could you give me access to share my screen? Is that possible? Yes, I think I just did. No, can you check? Perfect. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, folks, let us jump in for what is it? It is the number one thing you can do to maximize your impact and get funding. I think all social enterprises, basically all businesses, even all social initiatives have struggled at one time or another with that key issue of getting funding. How can we maximize our opportunities to get financing? So today we're going to talk about that one thing you can do to maximize your impact and get funding. And we're also going to jump into how Zero Project Scaling Solutions has helped 12 social enterprises from around the world, Latin America, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, South Korea, Australia, the Netherlands, how we've helped these organizations maximize their impact and reach new markets around the world. In our last webinar, we covered the top three reasons social enterprises fail, and we looked into how KPIs, key performance indicators, can help social enterprises prevent those or eliminate the risk of those failures. That webinar has been recorded, and it will be available around the end of the month, early May. So please check back on Zero Project's website because they will have all that information for you. And in a couple of weeks, on April 23rd, we're going to have the final of the four webinars that we have uh, scheduled. This webinar is dedicated to unlocking your why so you can set your price. So it's all about being able to explain what it is you do in a way that's effective enough that people are going to be willing to put money into whatever it is you're doing. And I think that's really important, whether you're trying to sell a product or a service or whether you're trying to sell an initiative to a funder, all of that is de determines how much funding, financing, or pricing you can command. So if you're like me, I stay up late at night trying to figure out why social enterprises can't get funding. I have at my heart uh, the, uh, the, the, the heart and soul of an advocate of a, uh, uh, of a person who wants to create social impact. And when I see businesses that have a strong social focus, not get the same levels of funding and support from industry or from government, 
to do the work that matters, it breaks my heart. So I'm always racking my brain, talking to other um, to other folks who are working in this field to try to figure out what are the key mechanisms, what are the things that are preventing social enterprises from getting the funding? Why are we sinking billions and billions of euros into companies that are purely profit-driven? And why can't we find ways of getting that same kind of financing into social enterprises? And so I want to start today's webinar with this idea of a lever. So Archimedes, the uh, ancient Greek mathematician, physicist, engineer, astronomer, and inventor, has a very famous saying. Who knows if he actually said it or not, or if it's just attributed to him. But regardless, he has uh, uh, attributed to him this saying, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. And I think this is what a lot of social enterprises are trying to do. They're trying to create change in the world. They're trying to create change in society. And what we need is a lever for them to use to make that change. So we're going to circle back to that word lever later on, because that has to do with what you as a business can do to keep things uh, going. My name is Dr. Anthony Giannoumis. My work focuses on raising awareness around social issues, especially around inclusive leadership. I do a lot of keynote speaking, and I do a lot of workshop facilitations, and I teach a course and I got this great book, The Sins and Wins of Inclusive Leadership, that just came out this year. It's a picture book for CEOs. So it's a great grab, easy read, and a fun, fun way to learn how to be more inclusive as a leader. Now, I, I think everybody on this call, or at least most of the people who are working in this field, understand that being able to measure your impact is essential for moving your business forward. It's essential for growing your business because this is how you showcase your value. This is how you showcase what it is that you do that's making a difference. And I think a lot of us get that it's about more than just doing really cool and good and important things that we also need to be financially sustainable. And if every year we're just struggling to get that next grant application done, if we're just struggling with scraps from whether it's government or industry or anyone else, where we're just constantly struggling just to get enough to get by, then we are not being financially sustainable. And if we want to scale, if we want to grow our initiatives, if we want to take what we're doing from one place in the world and seed it into a new opportunity to create impact in another, we need financial sustainability. And I think a lot of us understand that market demand is essential. If all we're, uh, I always say that um, if I'm in a classroom and I'm uh, lecturing and there is nobody in that classroom, then my, it makes the whole lecture pointless. We have to have demand for what it is that we are doing. Now, that can be a social justice demand to say, hey, this is about participation of people with disabilities in society. That's a form of demand. It can also be a demand from the market to say, hey, we need someone to provide these services because there's nobody else doing this right now. Or the folks that are doing this are either doing it at too high a price or isn't a good quality enough product or service. So knowing that there's market demand out there is absolutely essential for social enterprises to thrive. What I think a lot of us are missing is that we as social enterprises need measurable and scalable impacts. What that means right there off the bat, those three words, is we have to be able to assess what sort of impacts we're making, be able to quantify or qualify that in some way, and we have to be able to showcase how we can do those things, create those impacts in other places around the world. And that, that whole system and process has to be linked to a sustainable revenue model. And what that means is we got to be able to make money on the regular for an indefinite period of time at least until we've solved whatever problem we're trying to solve. And that could take generations. It could take a few years. Regardless, we got to be able to showcase that we can measure what we're doing, that, that that initiative can be scaled to other places, and that those activities can, are linked to something that's sustainable when it comes to your finances, and that is generating regular revenue. We've talked about some of these issues in the previous webinars. So I just want to go back and say again, 
the webinars that we've recorded uh, that we've done two previous to this this one and the one next are all being recorded and they'll all be posted on the zero project website at the end of the month so check back for that so I think this is the one thing we're missing as social enterprises that we need measurable scalable impact that's linked to a financial revenue model a sustainable revenue model and if we can manage this if, as we as entrepreneurs as social enterprises can manage to create those uh, sustainable revenue models, then it's going to help us minimize any risk that we might face by external threats that could jeopardize the future of our businesses and jeopardize our opportunities to scale those businesses. It can also help us maintain any strategic partnerships we might have with especially distributors, customers, clients, and stakeholders, but certainly on a more social impact level with government agencies, who are trying to make a difference, who are trying to make change with other industry partners and so other social enterprises that are trying to make those same kinds of changes. And it'll help us maximize any opportunities we have to innovate and grow. And what that means is we have to be able to see where those chances are in the future for us to create new solutions that solve really intractable problems and take those solutions and grow them grow them locally, grow them regionally, and grow them internationally. Now you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, yeah, Anthony, that sounds fine and great, but you're talking about what is the existential crisis of what it means to work as a social enterprise. Working in uh, social impact areas, we're always going to struggle with the finances. We're always going always to struggle with we don't know what the future is going to look like. And you're absolutely right. I'm not saying that everything is going to be great in the future for your initiative. What I am saying is that there are a few tricks of the trade that you can start doing now that will in some ways future-proof you or at least reassure you that your initiative is going to continue on into the future. And it's going to have the opportunity to grow, which is another key issue when it comes to impact. So here it is, the number one thing you can do to maximize your impact and get funding. It's the lever model. And this is the lever model for maximizing your impact, getting funding. It starts with illuminating the way. We're going to jump into that right off the bat. It goes into emancipating yourself. So that's what the E stands for. The V stands for venerating your partners. The other E stands for engaging with technology. And I know that's going to provoke some of the people on the line here, and that's all right. I think it's important that we think critically and find new ways of doing uh, things that we're accustomed to or doing by default. And the, the last letter, the R stands for reverberate, reverberate your messages. So let's just jump right into the first letter here. L, lever, illuminate the way. Let your data tell the story. And I chose these words very, very specifically, data and story, because your data is what showcases the value of what you're doing. If you are being approached by an investor, if you're being approached by a funder, or you're applying for funding from government or other resources, and you want to explain what it is you're doing, being able to put a number behind it goes a long way to convincing their head that what you're doing is spot on and what you're doing can create an impact. And it doesn't matter how modest that number is. You might have only had an impact on, I don't know, 15 or 20 people in the lifetime of your initiative, and that's okay. There are funders out there that are looking for folks who are at that stage in their growth journey. And you should put that out there. We have opportunities to grow right now, we're at this number. And that's enough to kind of flip the switch to say, okay, they've validated what they've done. And now I know as someone who is considering you as an initiative to get funding or put resources into, I know that what you're doing works. The other word there is story. And story is a really important part of it because if all you're doing is dumping numbers on somebody who's trying to decide whether or not to fund you or not, it can be, it can just come across as noise after the first three, four, five key statistics. But if you can tell a story after that, go beyond hitting them in the head and start hitting them in the heart, then you're going to get real traction with them because those are the opportunities to illustrate, to showcase, to exemplify the kinds of impact that you have on a human being. 
Having great data is good to show broadly the impact you can create, but having good testimonials or stories that showcase the impact personally that your work has created in someone's life can matter equally. So the way I think about it is this, quantitative to validate, qualitative to captivate. Quantitative data is simply numeric data. It's things that you can measure with a number. So this is the kind of like on a scale of one to five, even yes, no questions are quantitative or on the you know, scales of one to 10, whatever it might be, whatever number is there, that's quantitative. And we use that to validate that what we've done works and this is the way in which it works. Qualitative, on the other hand, are non-numeric measures. So these are interviews you might have done with stakeholders or users. These are testimonials. These are uh, observations that you may have made. And you, using those qualitative measures, those non-numeric measures to showcase, to captivate your audience, it could be a picture of what you do in action. So you got the number, you got the quantitative data. Now you've got a qualitative piece of data, a piece of information that you can use to captivate the funder's attention or your audience's attention. So using both of these is really uh, key and critical because again, it hits them in the head, the quantitative, the numeric, and then it hits them in the heart, the qualitative, the captivating. Okay, so that's L. Let's look at E. E stands for emancipate yourself. This is all about being independent from external funding. And I know for a lot of social entrepreneurs, that can be a really, really scary proposition to kind of dive off the deep end and say, okay, we're not going to worry about external funding anymore. We're just going to look at how we can generate revenue from other sources. But I can assure you, if you want to have a sustainable financial model, if you want to have a sustainable revenue model, you have to get out of the grant cycle. You have to get out of the feast or famine of, oh, I can apply for a grant and then hopefully we get it and maybe there's a 10% chance of getting it and then yay, we got it. So now we have funding for the next three years. But then what happens when that funding dries up? You're back into the cycle again. And it only takes one uh, grant or maybe two grants, especially if they're large scale grants that could jeopardize your initiative long-term. And it certainly makes it difficult to retain talent if what you're doing is every year, two years or three years, having to start a new project, having to hire new people, where you can't give your talented team members the reassurance that their job will be around after the next grant cycle. So emancipating yourself, getting yourself uh, in independent from external funding. And when I'm talking about external funding, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about grant funding from government, from industry, from associations, I don't care where you're getting that grant funding from, but anything that you have to apply for and you have to get renewed on a yearly or tri-yearly basis, all of that is makes you dependent on that resource, makes you dependent on the fickleness of a government uh, strategy, it makes you dependent on the funder. Getting independent from that means looking at revenue models and looking at how to generate income from other sources and other ways. And it gets you out of this feast or famine cycle. And it ideally will give you opportunities for your social enterprise to absolutely flourish. Because when you have revenue coming in, when you have money and income being generated by other value added services and products and things like that, then it gets you out of that grant cycle. And it gives you an opportunity to allow, to, to, to put a foundation a strong financial foundation that will ensure that your organization, your company, your social enterprise is going to be around for years and years and years to come. V, V is for venerate. Venerate your partners and value your networks. You know, there's a saying, in, at least in the United States where I'm from, that um, your, uh, your first customers are your employees. Well, I think the first customers are employees. The second customer should be your partners. It should be the people that you are working with that will help you move your business forward. And so you need to think about them less as kind of collaborators and more as almost clients. 
They're the ones that are going to find resources, find opportunities for you to grow your organization, to grow your work in the future. So put value into that, put time and energy into building those relationships, show appreciation, show kindness, show respect, show professionalism to these people so that you can build and nurture those relationships over a longer period of time. This is one of the most critical issues that are overlooked by social enterprises. They often start thinking about relationships within their network as kind of uh, you know, quid pro quo, tit for tat, like we do this, you do this, and we work together because of that. But we need to stop thinking about our relationships with our partners in that transactional way and start thinking about those relationships with those part partners in a more humane way. And that means working with the person and really thinking about what it is that get that brings joy into their life, no matter what it may be. Being able to connect with them on a personal level will ensure that those relationships are sustainable. And then as opportunities to generate revenue start to coalesce, it'll give you the opportunity to continue to make your business, your organization, your enterprise, your social enterprise sustainable as well. So make your partners a priority. I say that partners are priority, so prior prioritize your partners. Um, put them at the top of your to-do list, whether it's just to have a friendly coffee with them, whether it's to reach out and send them a nice little gift, whether it's just to send them a handwritten thank you card saying, hey, we've worked together for a number of years. I really appreciate the opportunity to continue working with you. I really value this collaboration. I really value this partnership. It doesn't matter how long you've known someone. The appreciation does a lot to sustaining that relationship in the future. And when you take it beyond that transactional kind of quid pro quo kind of relationship, then what it becomes is something more human and it's something that's easier to grow in the longer term. Less likely that you just... Uh, kind of accept it and, uh, and aren't able to showcase that appreciation. Second E, engage with technology trends. I cannot underline this any more than say, engage with these trends, engage with these trends, engage with these trends. You have to embrace innovative technologies. Even if your solution is a no tech or low tech solution, you got to find how it connects into technical trends. Everyone, is in investing in technology trends. It doesn't matter what industry you are in. It doesn't matter where you are positioned in the market. Everyone is investing in tech trends. And this is not a recent thing. This is something that's been going on for generations. Companies have always tried to embrace the latest technologies. And if they see you as a social initiative, embracing those same technologies that they're trying to embrace as a corporation or as a company or as a funder, as a client, then they're going to look at you a lot more um, uh, in a lot different way. Because then you're growing beyond just, oh, this is the good we're trying to do. This is the impact we're trying to create. And you're connecting it into, this is something we see that's happening in the world, in society, in technology. And here's how our work connects into that. And one of the key trends right now is artificial intelligence. So I would not support any social enterprise that isn't able to explicitly uh, state how their initiative connects to AI, to artificial intelligence. And that doesn't mean that AI is going to be around forever. It may, it may not. It may just be a flash in the, pan, plan, in the pan. But your capacity as a social enterprise is always going to be seen in light of those trends. And if you have an opportunity to connect your work, then it's going to be seen as much, much more attractive by funders, by uh, investors, and everyone else. So always mainstream, mainstream, mainstream your ideas, your initiatives in respect to emerging technology trends. And of course, if this was 20 years ago, we'd be talking not about AI, we'd be talking about mobile technologies because that's when all the app stores started going crazy and when all the mobile phones started really upping their game. So it doesn't matter what the tech trend is. You've got to be up to date on what those trends are and you've got to be able to frame, explain, talk about what you do in relation to those technology trends. So mainstream your work in relation to technology trends. And the last R has to do with you and your message 
reverberate your message. And this means you need to speak authentically from the heart, from who you are, both internally in your organization and externally. And this is just good leadership. If you are always trying to put a facade, whether it's in public communications or inside your organization, what you're going to come across as is, in some ways, a little bit artificial. We have to be able to think, speak authentically. This is what is being demanded of marketers. This is what is being demanded, especially of social enterprises. And this means when you speak authentically, you have to be able to be comfortable with being a little bit vulnerable. You've got to be comfortable with putting yourself out there. And again, this is not just in theory, this has to be in practice, whether you're putting a post on the LinkedIn, whether you're putting a memo out to your, your employees or your team, you've got to be able to speak from the heart, from who you are as a human being, and not just as a quote unquote leader, boss, or executive in your organization. So your personality will give your uh, social enterprise purpose. Your personality gives your enterprise purpose. So make your messages personal. Talk about your feelings. How is the experience of trying to grow a social enterprise? What does this look like if somebody else wanted to follow in your footsteps? The best mentors aren't the ones who are 10, 15, 20 years advanced to you or your work. Your best mentors are the ones that are one or two years advanced because they're going through it in the same, in the same time period that you are. They're going to be able to advise you. So make it personal. Make your experience personal so others can learn from it and so you can be visible as a thought leader. So Lever. Lever helps you maximize your impact to get funding. All about illuminating the way using your data should showcase your impact because if you do use data to showcase your impact, again, quantitative, numeric, and qualitative, non-numeric, you've solved a really important part of the funding equation because this is what funders are always going to be looking for. Give me the numbers, give me the, the, the stats, and then give me the heart behind it. What, uh, what is the feeling, the vision, the experience here? Lever, emancipate yourself. If you're dependent on external funding, you are always going to struggle to be financially sustainable and you will be unattractive to investors. No investor wants to put money into an initiative that is dependent on a grant funding for year to year or from election cycle to election cycle. You must be independent of, uh, of external funding. Lever, venerate your partners. If you build relationships with your partners, they'll be more likely to use their social capital to facilitate strategic connections. Now, I work with a lot of new and emerging businesses. I work with a lot of scale-ups. And when they say, Anthony, can you connect us to an investor? I say, yeah, I got about five or six investors that are in my regular you know, uh, social network. I can connect you to them, but that's going to cost me a lot of social capital. So if you're just dropping into my DMs one day saying, hey, Anthony, introduce me to an investor, I'm not going to even reply to that message. But if you've spent time developing a relationship with me, if you know what makes me tick, and I understand a little bit more about your work, enough to know who to connect you to, then I'm going to be more likely to make those connections, to spend that social capital so I can connect you to the people that might help you move forward. So build relationships with your partners. Lever, engage with technology. If you can demonstrate how your initiative connects to technology trends and today, that's AI, artificial intelligence. If you're not being, if you're not able to talk about your work in relation to AI, then nobody's going to look at you. It'll open up new funding opportunities, and that cause that's because whenever these technology trends happen, they're just huge growth spurts in the industry. There's a lot of resources that are being channeled into that. Every company wants to figure out the AI game, and they're putting time and energy into figuring it out. If you can be a lot part of that trend, then suddenly you're going to be a lot more attractive. It's going to open up so many new funding opportunities for you. And R, reverberate your message. If you speak authentically, showcase your personality, then you will be top of mind in the, for the people who can give you that support that you need. And that's all it takes. Being the first person on their mind when they say, oh, wait a minute, we have a new opportunity to do X, Y, or Z. 
you know who this would be perfect for? They, you want your name to be at the top of their head. So speak authentically, showcase your personality so that you'll continue to be top of mind in the, in the opportunities that are available to you. So this brings us into the Zero Project Scaling Solutions Program. We are avidly working on this next cycle. So this next cycle will start here in the next few months in 2024, and it'll end next year in 2025. And this is all about discovering new business models, new organization models that will help catapult businesses to new heights, that will take them from wherever they are and help them grow. So we know this statistic, if you're not familiar with it yet, 90% of new startups are destined for failure. That means there's only a 10% success rate in startups, and especially when it comes to social enterprises. And that's because there's this so-called valley of death when it comes to commercialization. When I talk about a sustainable revenue strategy, this is part of it. It's that commercialization stage from idea to actually making enough money so that you can continue long term. And I think a lot of us imagine that the cause is, well, we just need guidance and support for these initiatives. We just need somebody to kind of mentor them and take them along the way. And that's part of the equation. What we have found the actual cause to be is that it's not about the support necessarily. It's about the fact that the founders just give up. They just quit. They just stop working in their area. And so what we've developed as a solution, as a new opportunity for initiatives that have started but haven't had a chance to grow yet or, or have started that growth journey is to develop both the person, the founder, the initiator, and the organization or business that they've, uh, that they've started. And we've created this program uh, with a lot of support from a lot of amazing folks, including the Essel Foundation, Fundacion Descubreme, they're based in Chile, Atos, based in the UK, GIZ, uh, German uh, Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development there in Germany, and uh, my company, Inclusive Creation, based here in Norway. Now, on the team of the Scaling Solutions work, we have Margaret, which you uh, You've uh, met there at the beginning of this uh, webinar. We have uh, the uh, amazing Regant Arnori, who is just a champion of uh, putting together really, really strong programs, really, really strong initiatives, and has a lot of experience in this uh, in this area. And we have my other colleague, Anne Eagle Chiron, who is the co-founder of Inclusive Creation and has a really strong head for inclusion, really strong head for creating new social enterprises. And I think a lot of us get that social enterprises, things around disability, disability innovations are core to moving our world into the future. And that's because if it works for someone with a disability, it'll work for everybody. It'll work for me and it'll work for anyone else. And we have so many examples, things like speech to text, the keyboard and typewriter, audiobooks originally developed for someone with a disability, later became adopted by everyone. And now we're all looking around and saying, well, what would we do without these technologies? Well, they were invented with someone with a disability in mind. And so what we as a program want to do is help take those disability innovations and find ways to bring them to everyone to bring them to the world. And this takes being able to commercialize and scale. It takes being able to create those sustainable uh, revenue uh, models. Uh, it takes being able to target those market opportunities that are out there that might be uh, useful for you as an initiative to focus on. It, it takes being able to reinvent business models a lot of the time, especially when we talk about getting independent uh, from external funding that may mean that you have to change your business model uh, rather dramatically and focus in on new stakeholders and new groups. And that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to leave behind the groups that you care about the most, the sort of impacts that you want to create. What it means is you have to take that as a starting point and find ways of generating revenue uh, on the back of that. And it takes making sure that you as an organization can operate effectively, can execute your vision and grow and expand into the future. So our program is customized. It is not a one size fits all program. You've probably heard of a thousand different incubators and accelerators and business development programs that are out there. Most of them are generic. 
Most of them are one size fits all. They're just focused on startups and they're not interested in something that's around disability necessarily. And they're certainly not necessarily interested in disability innovations. Our program, the Scaling Solutions Program, is specifically tailored, customized to create insights, to provide opportunities to enable those organizations, those uh, initiatives to grow, personalized to the experiences of founders, of innovators who are working in the space of disability rights. And Zero Project Scaling Solutions occupies a really unique position in the market because we combine four really key issues. We combine innovation with advocacy for persons with disabilities, for and with persons with disabilities, combined with knowledge sharing amongst our absolutely vast network. I think there's not a organization working with or representing people with disabilities that is not connected into our network. It's absolutely uh, amazing. And combine that with opportunities to create research, knowledge, and insights to help your organization grow. And what all this does is it helps minimize any sort of risk that your initiative will fall into that trap, fall into that valley of death. It helps you bridge that commercialization gap to get you from idea from initial startup phase to a growth phase. And that helps you also maintain your momentum as an initiative. You might have gotten to a point in your work where you feel like you're losing steam, or maybe you're just starting and you want to see all of this momentum build and continue. This program helps you maintain that momentum. And most importantly, for any social enterprise, it helps you maximize your impact. Because when you're able to replicate what you are doing from area A to areas B, C, D, E, and beyond, this is what real impact is about. This is where creating impact through growth, through scaling, can truly make a difference. Now you might be thinking, Anthony, fine, but wait, it sounds like you're asking us to do a lot of work. And honestly, you're not wrong. In fact, I think the growth trajectory of most social enterprises is such that if you're on that exponential growth curve, if you've already validated, you already have something that's working and you're starting to grow, the effort is only going to grow. And it's only going to, your traction is only going to get greater in the market and in the, in the areas that you're working in. But what Scaling Solutions does is make that growth smoother and more likely to achieve greater heights. And that's really, really important for what all of us are doing in this area. Um, our program is anchored in expertise. So we have so many subject matter experts in any area that you could possibly imagine that we are prepared to offer different initiatives so that they can grow. The whole program was created by startups and validated by experts. So it's not something that we've just imagined might work and kind of wave the magic wand and hopefully this does what it intends to do. This program is absolutely effective in growing social enterprises. And it's founder centric. So what we work with is people who have started these initiatives to make sure that they can grow. And we do this through rewards and giveaways. Everybody loves a gift. And so we try to make sure that there's always incentives behind anything we're asking the founders to do. Number two, by valuing lived experiences, we all know that the experiences of persons with disabilities are absolutely crucial in creating a more inclusive world and in creating more inclusive innovations. And we put a high price on those lived experiences. Number three, we make sure that you have a strong, supportive mentor and reverse mentor to make sure that the work you're doing can grow to the heights that you want it to. And number four, we've got a whole growing peer and alumni support community. So you're not only tapping in to the vast network that we have at Scaling Solutions, you're also tapping into a peer support group and an alumni support group, people who have gone through what you're going through now and who can guide you along the way. Our program, Scaling Solutions, is also business-centric. So we are focused in on your go-to-market strategies. We're focused in on giving you tools to help you scale your, uh, your work. 
And it's also about giving you advice, whether that comes down to funding, law, or anything else that you could imagine, product development, technology development. We are there to help you provide you with the, the knowledge that you need to, to grow. We're also network centric. I mentioned before, there's probably not a single initiative worldwide that is focused on disability issues that we're not connected to. And that is because we have this group of partners, the German government, we have Atos, which is a tech company, massive, massive company. We have Fundacion de Scrubberme, who's representing a lot of strong representation there from Latin America. We have the Zero Project Conference, which is held every year at the UN in Vienna, which attracts thousands of people. And we have Enable India, who's holding down a lot of the connections there in India and in Central Asia. These, this network is empowering. Being able to be part of it, being able to see and bear witness to the power that this network can create by enabling individuals who are trying to champion social impact is, is beyond anything. It's been very, very meaningful, meaningful experience in my life. The whole program is focused in on three key issues, metrics-driven value enhancement, connectivity for sustainable growth, and external relations and strategic alliances. So you'll notice here right off the bat, this is not just business development, business model canvas, kind of basic, basic, basic stuff. This is advanced level stuff. This means you need to have an initiative that's been out there that you know works that you're, you're on the way to growing or is already growing. This is where this program can help you the most. And we have a mantra. It's something that just makes me feel good to say because this is the guidelines that we use in our program to guide how we think about it and how we think about the work. And number one, the process of growing is messy. It can be really, really unsettling for people who like things structured and just so. I'm one of those kinds of people. But in reality, growing a business, growing a, an enterprise is extremely messy and you have to trust the process. And especially with scaling solutions, you have to trust the process because we know how this works. Number two, work on relationships first, everything else second. I talked about this earlier, your relationships with your partners matters. It matters almost more than anything else. So always focus in on those relationships. Number three, feel those feelings and be kind to yourself. You're a human being. Be comfortable with saying, hey, I feel like I'm getting burned out. I need to take a step away from things. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle. Give yourself grace. Number four, care about the process more than the end. If all you have in your mind is the vision of being able to do X, Y, and Z, you're going to grow very dissatisfied with what you do because what you do is a process. It takes time. So you got to care about that process way more than you care about whatever end game that you have in your mind. And number five, probably the most important thing, especially when it comes to scaling solutions, is be open to new ways of working and thinking. The scaling solutions program will radically change your perspective on the work that you're doing. I've seen organizations and initiatives come into this thing going, this is the only thing we're about. This is the only thing we care about and come out of this program going, wait a minute. Yeah. The thing that we are doing matters, and we are not going to stop doing that, but we're also going to work on this because we know that's vital to the future of our initiative. And this year, we're taking a turn from what we've done in previous years. So last year was our first year with Scaling Solutions. We learned a whole lot of things, and we're making it bigger and better than ever. I am so excited to get started on this because, number one, we're going to provide scaling support tailored scaling support, customized scaling strategies for replicating your work in new and different countries. And this is research-driven insights. These are not just me going, hmm, seems like we should do this and not that. This is, we are going to look into these things with you and for you so that you understand exactly where the opportunities lie. Number two, that tailored mentorship and training support. We're going to give you training, but we're fairly light on training. This is not a training program. This is a scaling program, and we're going to provide tailored mentorship. That means you're not going to just get any generic mentor out of the box. You're going to get someone who's well-versed, who has faced the issues you've faced before to help you jump over those hurdles. Number three, you're going to get personal advisors and support, uh, support services. You're going to get people uh, who are backing you, who are supporting you into your next, uh, into your next uh, stage of your journey. Number four, 
Uh, you're going to get pitch training by myself in uh, Zero Project uh, Conference 2025. That's ZeroCon 2025. Uh, that'll be held next year in February. This is a face-to-face -face training in Vienna, in, uh, in uh, Austria, which is going to be very, very exciting. This year's training was absolutely wonderful. Uh, all the Scaling Solutions fellows got a lot of value out of it. We're excited to do it again next year. And then in Zero Project Conference 2025, you're going to get matchmaking support, and you're going to get so many new opportunities for partnering with folks who can take your work to the next level. I cannot understate this. Zero Project Conference is one of the keys to making sure that your work is flourishes. Again, thousands of people around the world. If you can't find a partner who can help you to that next level, then you're just not looking if you're if you're at Zero Project Conference. So here's a few things I want you guys to consider. I want you guys to think about, and we're going to launch a uh, a uh, a uh, a poll here. So for those folks who are online, the attendees, could I just ask for you to give us your reflections really quick? Do you think this works for your needs? The kind of discussions that we've had today is this where you're at in your organization? Number two, does it fit with your priorities? Are you ready for these sorts of challenges? Are you ready to grow the work that you're doing? And number three, is this relevant for your work? Or do you feel like you're in the wrong room? Or maybe I'm in the wrong room? Or maybe you're feeling like, yeah, this is exactly what I need to hear right now. So if you could take a chance to please answer those three questions in the poll, it really helps us to kind of tailor this work for the future. And while you're answering those questions, I'm going to start to sign off by asking you to reflect on whether or not it's too early for you to scale your work. And I know I've been talking about scaling this whole time, this whole hour, but I want you to think maybe it's too early for you to start scaling your work. Maybe what you need to do is spend more time thinking about what resources you might need. Maybe you need to spend more time planning. Maybe you can spend more time developing your product or researching your market. Those are foundational level things that you would need to have in place before you come into a program like Scaling Solutions. So think critically about that work that you're doing. And it's not to discourage you. What it's meant to do is encourage you to take those next steps in your journey. Because we're going to be looking at those initiatives in the next few weeks to find out who we want to be part of Scaling Solutions 2024, 2025. And uh, I want you guys who are on this line to be amongst, to be amongst our group. There is a call for nominations that is currently out for Zero Project Conference 2025. Uh, please grab this QR code and fill out your nomination. So you can nominate yourself, you can nominate another initiative, check out what they've got going on because I tell you what, it is absolutely amazing. Next year's conference is gonna be centered around inclusive employment and ICT. So anything related to these topics is gonna to be what we are looking for. And of course, in a few weeks here, May 7th, I'm leaving for Chile in, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna have Zero Project Latin America. I'll be there, I'll be speaking, I'll be running some workshops. The whole conference is on inclusive education, ICT, and corporate strategies for inclusion. The whole thing will be run in Spanish and English. There's gonna be international sign and live captioning. So check it out, grab that QR code, and you can join us. And lastly, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, I love this work so much and I would love to work with you please scan this QR code, connect with me on social media, and we can continue this conversation. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to be part of this webinar. I sincerely appreciate it. I've had a lot of fun. I know I learned a lot just making this webinar. I hope you learned quite a bit in, uh, in attending this webinar. And again, the recording will be available online uh, around the end of the month. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please again, Grab that QR code and we can continue the conversation. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.